This morning to John, the 15th chapter. Pick up where we left off Tuesday night. Hallelujah. John, the 15th chapter. <coughs> and beginning in the first verse. Going to read about five verses there. John, the 15th chapter, the first verse. Jesus speaking, He said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. It's important to note today that the purging is not to kill, but for the benefit of the vine. Amen? So that it will bring forth more fruit. Fruit. Brother Jimmy Swagger told a story one time. They were over somewhere around the Everglades or somewhere. I don't know where they were at, but and there was a there was a lot of dead weight and dead wood and brush or something there. And one of the tourists told Brother Swagger said, "What we really need is a hurricane." <laughs> and Brother Swagger said, "What are you talking about?" He said, "Well, we need something to wash it away and to break off all this dead stuff and wash it on out of here." So it would make room for new life. Amen. Because the dead stuff choking out the stuff that's supposed to be living. And to purge something, to prune it, to cut it back, that's not to kill the plant. The trial that you're going through is not to kill you, but to make you stronger. The thing that you're facing is not to destroy you, but to help you. Amen. Get to your goal. And he said it's purged not, not to kill it, but that it may bring forth more fruit. Then he says in verse 3, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now see, that's not what we're going to preach on this morning. But we just got through finishing about three sermons on the importance of the word of God. And here we find it again. It's impossible to get away from it. The importance of the word of God. Jesus says you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I've used this example for you before, and I'll tell you again this morning. If you have an apple tree out here, and there's a branch on it, and it's bringing forth beautiful apples, and, and they're good to eat, they're pretty to the eye, it's bearing fruit, much fruit. It's got a lot of fruit on it. If you separate that branch from the tree, if you cut that limb off and you toss it to the side it will no longer bear fruit it will lay there and die it will become a dead stick it will become dead and lifeless the same thing happens to you if you get outside of him because without him we can do nothing without him we cannot bear fruit amen and that's what he's telling us here he says abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. And then he puts it about as plain as any old country boy needs it to be able to understand it. For without me, ye can do nothing. Without Him, we cannot do anything. We cannot accomplish anything. We cannot amount to anything. Without Him, we can have no peace. Without Him, there is no provision. Without Him, there is no rest to enter into. Without Him, we can do nothing. We have nothing. Without In Him, we live and move and have our being. Without Jesus, there is no life outside of Him. Amen? It's an empty shell of a thing that the world calls life, but at the end it will amount to nothing. Amen? I started to say very little, but really, if you live your life without Jesus, it doesn't amount to very little. It amounts to nothing. Amen? You will be able to salvage nothing from this life. Nothing you work for will matter. None of your efforts will matter. None of the strength that you use will matter unless you use that strength and that life for Him and in Him. When we abide in Him, then we can accomplish something that's worth accomplishing in this life. Without Him, there is no provision, no peace. There is no hope. There is no fortress or strong tower to run into. Go to Psalms, the 61st chapter with me this morning. Psalm 61. 
I don't have any trouble understanding why someone without God, without Jesus, would commit suicide. Because they have no hope. They have no peace. They have no rest to enter into. I have no problem. As sad as it is, when I hear that someone has hung themselves, when I hear that someone has taken a handful of pills, when I hear someone took a gun and put it in their head and pulled the trigger, and I find out they were an atheist, or they were without God, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus, I had no trouble understanding that. Because I know today without Him, there is no hope. I know today without Him, there is no peace. I know today without Him, there is nothing that will be able to sustain you in time of trouble. You have no hope to run to. You have no strong tower to run to and to cling to in your time of need. So I have no trouble understanding why someone would do that. Aren't you glad this morning that you got hope? Aren't you glad this morning that you have somebody to hold on to? Aren't you glad this morning that the anchor holds? Amen? Though the sails are ripped and battered. Aren't you glad this morning that the anchor holds? Though your ship has been through the storm and it's beaten up. And it's, 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 it's weather worn. Amen? But you're holding to His nail scarred hand. Let's read what the psalmist said in Psalm 61. To the chief musician of Negev, a psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth. I want you to listen to the way that David worded this psalm. Very few people, if anybody, in the history of the world could word things the way that the psalmist David did. Listen to the way that he puts this. He said, From the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee. In other words, when I've came to my wit's end, whenever I've came to the end of my rope, whenever my back is against the wall, and you see that's whenever people make the kind of drastic decisions that we see in the news and in the headlines. When they come to the end of their rope, they have nowhere else to turn, so they think it's better to end it all than it is to go on. They think it's better to take a handful of pills and not wake up in the morning than it is to face life the way they've been facing life. But thank God today He has not left us hopeless. If the enemy's trying to convince you today that you're hopeless, we're gonna, we've got a new story to break to him this morning. Amen? We are not without hope. We are not without a place to run in the time of trouble. And King David knew this. And he said, from the end of the earth, when I'm at the end of my rope, when I'm at the end of my hope, whenever my back is against the wall, he said, when my heart is overwhelmed from the end of the earth, and when my heart is overwhelmed, oh, if we ever lived in a day where people feel like their heart is overwhelmed, whenever it feels like it's one thing right after another. So many people today, and we're, we don't have it as bad as Job, but to hear some of them talk and to hear the way we talk, sometimes you would think we have it as bad as Job because it seems like when one thing tears up, something else tears up. Whenever one somebody gets sick, somebody else gets sick. When you get over one thing, you come down with something else. Whenever this here is taken care of, there's something else that breaks or goes on. Amen? It seems like it's one trial right after the other, no matter who you are. Their hearts seem to be overwhelmed. And the Bible even says Luke in the book of Luke, Jesus told them that in the last days men's hearts would fail them for fear. Why? For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Today in the hour that we live in, it's easy for you to become, feel like you're overwhelmed. For your heart to be overwhelmed with the sorrows of the world. When you turn on the news and you see the condition of our nation. When you turn on the news and you hear the weather reports. When you turn on the news and you hear of the terrorists that are beheading people in other countries. And whenever you turn on the news and you hear that those same terrorists might have sales in our country. Whenever you look to the left and you see trouble. When you look to the right and you see trouble. When you look all around you can see no hope. That's where people are at today. And their hearts, because they have no one to turn to, because they think they have no one to turn to, because they don't know the one to turn to, their hearts are overwhelmed and their hearts are failing them for fear because of the things that are coming upon the earth. But David said, when I find myself in that place, 
when I'm at the end of the earth, when my heart is overwhelmed, he said, I will cry unto thee. Last part of the second verse. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the strong tower. Lead me to the place of refuge. Lead me to the cleft of the rock. Lead me to the place of safety under the shadow of your wings. Lead me to the place where I can trust and hold in you and trust in your protection. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, he didn't say that my heart fails me for fear because he said, when my heart's overwhelmed, I will cry unto thee. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm at the end of my rope, when my heart is overwhelmed and it seems like everything and anything has come against me, I will cry, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The third verse. Psalm 61, he says, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. You see, what we have today is better than a storm cellar. What we have today is better than a bomb shelter. Those things will protect you from something that happens in this life. We have something far more better than hope only in this world. Oh, hallelujah. I, if you can get a hold of that, Oh, you're talking about carrying you a few more miles down the road. Amen. Hallelujah. If we can get a hold of the fact today that, Brother least this life is not all there is. And that we don't have hope only in Him in this life. Because if we did, as the Apostle Paul said, we would be of all men most miserable. But our hope does not end when breath leaves this body. As a matter of fact, our life has just begun. Amen. Whenever we find ourselves overwhelmed, we have a refuge and a strength strong tower to run to today. His name is Jesus, the rock of all ages, the Alpha, the Omega, the I Am that I Am, the beginning and the end, the great counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. You have somebody to turn to this morning. When you feel like you're hopeless, there is hope in Him. When you feel like there's no peace, there is peace in Him. When you feel like there is no refuge, there's a place to hide under the shadow of the Most High. Hallelujah. He is our hope. He is our portion today. He is an eternal shelter. Because if the Apostle Paul put it this way, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. Paul was saying our hope goes far beyond this temporal thing. And I'm not sure I'd have to look this up, but he might have been writing this from jail. He might have been writing this from prison. If he wasn't in prison, he certainly, when he gives his testimony, he talks about the things that press him daily. The trials that he had been through. The time that he'd been shipwrecked, he'd been whipped, and that he'd been in the deep, and all of these things, these turmoil and trials that had went on in his life. But Paul said, realize, church, we don't just have hope in this life. What this life has is not all there is to be had. <laughs> there is a greater treasure laid up for me. Oh, glory to God. To live is for Christ. Oh, to suffer for Him. And to press on through. And be a witness for Him. And to help His people. To live is for Christ. But to die is gain. To die is gain. Because we don't just have hope in this life. We need to know that today. We need to know that today. And that's why people can go into a room with a loaded gun and pull the trigger. Because they feel like the only hope they have is in this life. And when you look around and realize this is all there is, you don't have any hope. You don't have any hope. Because this life for many people is a life of trouble. In a life of trial, a life of sickness. People say, I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of going through all of this. Yeah, but just hold on a little longer. One of these days we're going to step out. I know He's a healer. He can heal you today. I have no doubt in my mind that He can heal you today. He has healed my body today. But if He don't, oh, glory to God. He hasn't left us hopeless. He hasn't left us without any peace today. There is hope to be found in trusting Him. Amen. 
David said, Thou art a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Proverbs 18, 10 and 11 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. He goes on to say that the rich man's wealth is his strong city, and in high wall is his own conceit. The things of this world will vanish away. We can trust and hope in Jesus because He is eternal. The promise that He has made for us is eternal today. There is a protection and a peace that can be found in abiding in Him. Hallelujah. That no matter what happens, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, He is more than enough to see us through. Hallelujah. He is more than enough to see us through. Amen. Religion will fail you. Men will fail you. Family will fail you. Your own flesh will fail you on a daily basis. But Jesus will never fail. Jesus is always there with you. Even when you feel like He's a million miles away, He's standing there with you. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I have staked my life uh, on the fact that this is the Word of Almighty God. I believe with all my heart this is the Word of Almighty God. I'm so fanatical today that I believe if this says it, that settles it. There ain't no more to it. Amen. This is the final authority in my life. And this book has promised me, hallelujah, that all things in this life will work together for my good. And beyond that, even more so, it has promised me of a hope for tomorrow. Once this, this body gives up the ghost and steps over into the presence of a living God, Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Someone said this week they can't understand. Brother Kenny was just, what, 53 or 54 years old. They don't understand why he's gone. I don't understand it either, but I understand this much. If you could talk to Brother Kenny today, hallelujah, he wouldn't come back for everything that this world has to offer. Hallelujah. Because He's in the presence of the crucified one. He's already in the presence of a living God. So yes, we weep and we mourn and the family will grieve because of the loss. But Brother Kid is walking on streets of gold and holding on to the nail-scarred hand of Jesus. He's already crossed the finish line and He's already made it and He wouldn't come back for anything this world has to offer. No amount of money. No amount of fame. Nothing on this world compares to where he's at now. Oh, glory to God. We have a strong tower to run to today. We have a provider in our time of need. Amen. Go with me to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. Let's talk about Elijah for just a few minutes. I'm not going to try to hold you very long. Hallelujah. And we've read this. And we've read this and we've read this and we'll read it again and we'll read it some more before we're out of here. Amen? Look at Elijah during the time of famine. Look at Elijah during the time of his need. When he had came to the end of the earth, as David put it, amen? When there was nowhere else to turn to, let's see how the God of provision provided for him. Let's refresh our memory this morning. 1 Kings, the 17th chapter in the first verse. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. In verse 2, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Give thee hence. Now remember, this is the time of the famine. And the Lord tells Elijah, Give thee hence. And turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. I want you to notice this. We've talked about this before. Listen to the wording. This is why it's so important for you to have the closest thing you, you can to the original. Amen? Because the wording is very important. God don't, you know, sometimes we waste a lot of words. I've heard people say, well, I took a long, I, I've taken the long way around to tell you the story or whatever, however they put it. This is the long way around, long story, whatever. Some people say to make a, a long story short, a lot of people have a way of making a short story long, amen? And they waste all this time. God don't waste words. If it's in your Bible more than once, it's not meant for you to take it out because God repeated Himself for a reason. Amen? So listen to the way that the Holy Spirit 
words this. Get thee hence, turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded already, already taken care of, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So in essence, God had already made provision for the prophet if he obeyed God. Now if he stayed where he was at and didn't go up there with the brook Cherith and didn't go up there where God had made a way and provided, then he would have probably starved to death right where he was at. Amen? But he obeys the word of God and God has already made provision. God has already made provision. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. God has already made provision for us to be able to sustain it. He said He would not put more on you than you're able to bear. And with the trial, with this temptation, He would also make a way of escape. Who is that way? Jesus. Faith and trust in Him. That is our means of peace today. That is our means of hope today. That is our way of escape today. Faith in Jesus Christ. Holding to His nail-scarred hand. So we see Elijah. He runs geographically. He ran to the brook Cherith. But in reality, he was running to the rock that was higher than him. In reality, he was running to the strong tower. Amen? So he could find peace and comfort. And so he could find protection within that. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Amen? God chooses some strange places to put His people. Amen? In the midst of this famine, there were other places that God could have set Him up. He could have fixed Him up here and provided for Him. And He said, I want you to go to the brook Cherith. And while you're up there, I'm going to have some birds, some unclean birds, bring you something to eat. Amen? These birds wasn't even clean birds. They was the cousin of a buzzer. And He said, I've already commanded them. I've already set it in a place. I've already made... Glory to God, I've already made provision and you're going to be taken care of there. God has already made provision for us today. He has given each and every one of us what it takes to make it through. Whenever you're born again, whenever you're saved, He gives you a measure of faith. And that faith that He has given you, if we put it into action, if we obey His Word, glory to God, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, that, that faith will see you through. When the Apostle Paul didn't know what he was going to do, and he sought the Lord three times to take away the thorn in his flesh, God spoke to him and said, My grace has been provided and is sufficient for you. God has given His grace to, to help us make it through today. He has given us a measure of faith today. And if we'll put that into action, if we'll trust in His Word, if we'll obey His Word, He's going to see us through. We may not be able to understand everything. Everything may not happen the way we want it to happen, but He will see us through. When the storm's over, when the dust of the battle clears, we will stand victorious in Jesus Christ because He is our strong tower today. So the Bible says that Elijah, in verse 5, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith. There he is. He's in that strong tower. He's in that place of provision. Glory to God. Mm. He went and, and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. God will provide for you. And he'll do it through buzzards sometimes. Amen. We've had people over the years that did not like us. Did not like this ministry at first. And before it was said and done, they were faithful supporters. God will see, we have, re we have received support from people that there you couldn't have paid me to believe they would have ever even done it. But God has made provision mm -hmm. through people. Amen. God will use ravens to bring you Oh, amen. Sometimes he can't use sometimes he can't use those pretty birds because they feel like they they're too worthy to stoop to that task. Amen. But he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll take it from the wicked and give it to the righteous. Amen. <laughs> they won't even realize they're doing it. it. Said the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Just as God said. Aren't you glad God's faithful to keep His promise? Amen. We may not keep all of ours. 
No, but don't tell how many promises. Millions of promises have been broken. People that said, God, if you'll do this, I promise I'll be faithful to church. I promise I'll start paying my tithe. I promise I'll start giving. How many people have made that kind of promise before? I ain't even go my eyes and look. Those of you out there by radio, maybe you said, God, if you give me that job, I promise I'm going to pay my tithe. If you do this for me, I promise I'm going to be faithful to church. If you come through for me, I promise I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray every day. You didn't do it. God did His part. You didn't do yours. Thank God for His mercy. Amen. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Now God knew this already. He knew that Elijah would go up there and sooner or later the brook was going to dry up. Amen. And there sits Elijah. The brook is dried up. The birds ain't bringing him no more food. And he's like, now what? What am I going to do? What to do? What to do? <laughs> Same thing we're going to have to do today. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to have to trust the Lord. The, as the psalmist wrote in Psalms 20 and 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That's what we're going to do. We're going to trust in Him. We're going to cry out for Him to lead us to that rock that is higher than I. He's going to see us through. We may not understand it. We may not like it. I pray before God, if you have to, drag me across the finish line. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Get me there. There are things that happen in this life I don't like. There are things that I don't understand. Amen. But I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand. What happens to the prophet here? Verse 8. The brook's dried up. The birds have quit coming. He ain't getting no food. He ain't getting no water. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded, same wording he uses for the ravens. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Same wording he uses for the, for the ravens. He already had the brook prepared. He had already prepared the ravens to take care of the prophet. Here we are. He has set things into place for Elijah to go down and the widow woman to be gathering sticks out in her yard when he got to the gate. Amen? And for him to ask the little widow woman, will you give me something to eat? Can you bring me some bread and a, uh, some water and a morsel of bread? And the little widow woman now, what's she going to do? There stands Elijah obeying the word of God. And God has already said that He knew this woman was at the end of her rope. <laughs> he brought her there. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. She might not like the way it happened, but she's there because of divine ordinance of God. He has commanded this. He has put it into place. Here's the place of provision. She's like David. She's at the end of the earth. She's at the end of a rope. But she's ain't out of she ain't, she's at the end of a rope, but she ain't out of hope. God will sustain them. God will sustain them. The word of the Lord came to him, told him he's got a with a woman in Zarephath to sustain him. Just as he had commanded the ravens, he had commanded the widow woman. He had already set into place that which would see Elijah through. No matter what battle you face tomorrow, God has already set in place today the means of escape that you'll need to see it through. He has done the same thing for us today as He did for Elijah. In a world where sin does abound, He has promised us in His Word, where sin doth abound, grace does much more abound. In a world where there is no peace, no safety, no refuge, He has promised us today peace, safety, and refuge can be found in Him. Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. The strong tower. He has already given us enough grace for it to be sufficient for every need that we go through. That song that we sing is not just a song. It was inspired of God. When the writer of old sat down and wrote, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a rich like me. I once was lost, oh, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And that would have been beautiful and he could have stopped right there. But then he writes, Through many dangers, toils and snares, 
I have already come. His grace has brought me safe this far, and His grace will lead me home. <laughs> His grace is sufficient. He said, nothing will come upon you, Brother Rodney, that you can't handle. Why? Because He's made a way of escape. He is our way of escape. Faith in Him. Running to that strong tower, that rock that is higher than I, that one that has grace that is sufficient to see us through. Oh, Jesus said, I am the way. He is our way of escape. Faith in Him. Faith in Him. And His amazing grace. Glory to God. In a world where there's nothing, where nothing seems to be enough, in a world where nothing seems to be sufficient, it seems like the more money you get, the more money you have. Amen. What does Elijah do in his time of need? He follows the Word of the Lord. It says in verse 10, He arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, behold, there's a big shock. What did he find? The widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And y'all know this. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. She said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little, cru oil, a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. See that word there is not in parentheses. That, that word right there is not italicized. That's what I should have said. When it says that she's gone to gather two sticks, that means that was actually in the original Textus Receptus, the original transcripts, the original scrolls. Two sticks. <laughs> Every provision found in the cross. Amen. Every provision found in the cross. Look at that two sticks. Amen. She said, I don't have it. Oh, but she did. She held it with it. She through the through the faith that she possessed in God. That's where her provision would come. When she put her faith in that strong tower, when she put her faith in that rock that was higher than her, she said, I don't have it. Listen, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that I may that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go. See, Elijah already knew. He'd already faced the prophets of Baal on top. This is only a few of the miracles he'd seen in his life. He had stood on the top of Mount Carmel and faced the prophets of Baal and seen the fire come down and not only consume the sacrifice but lick up the water that was in the ditch. Amen? He had seen God provide for him food in the mouths of ravens up there by the brook chariot. He said, fear not, woman. God has already ordained all of this. Hallelujah. He's already promised me that you're going to sustain me. And in order for you to sustain me, that means God's going to sustain you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, fear not. God's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me. That's all she said she had in the first place was just make a little bit. I believe with all my heart that little bit she was going to make for her son and for her, that's what she took back to the prophet. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what she took back to the prophet. So she takes that. This is all there is, she thought. <laughs> this is all I got, she thought. This is all the sustenance I got, she thought. She gives it to the prophet and she goes back and according to the word of the Lord, her meal barrel didn't go dry. The cruise of oil didn't stop up. Amen. According to the word of God, she didn't hit bottom to the famine was over. Amen. Because she obeyed the word of God, put her faith in the strong tower, held on to Jesus. Amen. Put her faith in the I am that I am. The rock that was higher than her and it sustained them. Not just her, but her and her son and the prophet. 
did eat for many days on that little bit of oil and that little bit of meal all because she put her faith in the strong tower all because his grace was sufficient amen if somebody says what are you going to do tell them I'm going to depend on his grace I'm going to put my faith in him I'm going to run to the rock that is higher than I I'm going to put my trust and my faith in the strong tower I'm going to abide in him and when I do he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way hallelujah he is our strong tower today let me finish this Oh, hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel in verse 14. I'm getting ready to close. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according. Now this is an act of faith. She didn't have nothing to fall back on. She wasn't just thinking, well, if I can make it till payday Friday, I can go to Walmart. This is all she had, and there wasn't nowhere else to get any. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house all starved to death because God's so powerless he couldn't see them through. That ain't what it says. He and she and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. The word of the Lord comes and tells him to go to Zarephath and the widow woman will feed him. The word of the Lord comes to him before that and tells him to go by the brook Cherith. And like I said, geographically speaking, he was in the brook Cherith. Then when he moved on, geographically speaking, he was at Zarephath where the widow woman was sustaining him. But spiritually, he was under the shadow of the Most High. He had ran to the strong tower wherein provision is found. He had ran to the city of refuge, the place where he could find sustenance to see him through the hard times. Jesus is still enough to see us through famine. He's still enough to see us through the last days. He's still enough to keep us and to preserve us and to provide for us. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. Amen. Glory to God. He had ran to that strong tower. As King David said, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Oh, my, my, my. If I had time this morning, we'd read Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Glory to God. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. Do y'all see that word right there? Underline it or mark, write it down on your paper. Trust. Amen. Trust. Trust. Faith in Him. His truth shall be, my, shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by day nor the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Because my faith is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. My peace is found in you, Lord. I will abide in the vine, and I will be my every need will be supplied because He is the life giver. He is our strong tower today. He is our strong tower today. Glory to God. Run to the rock that is higher than I. If you feel like your heart's overwhelmed, if you feel like that you don't know where to go and you've lost every friend and maybe your spouse has passed away, maybe you're facing things financially, hold on to Jesus. He's more than enough to see you through. He's the same God that saw Elijah through at the brook. He's the same God that made a way for the widow woman with her empty barrel and her empty cruise. He'll make a way for you. Amen. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Amen. We just got to hold on to Him. We got to trust in Him. we got to run to Him. I know that these days are perilous. I know that these days are dangerous times. And they're scary if you look at them through carnal eyes. I know today that it seems like everything's broken. Can't nobody fix it. I know today that it seems like that there's more trouble and trials than you can, that you can deal with. But if you'll hold on to Jesus, 
Hold on to Jesus. This life is just a vapor and appears for a little while and then vanishes away. If we'll hold on to Him, even if things don't get better in this life, there's another life coming. Amen? Even if things don't get better for you on this side of the river, when you cross over Jordan's chilly tide, me and Brother Dave was talking about it last night, we'll enter into that land where there is no more sorrow, there is no more sickness, there is no more fear, there is no more tears because He has wiped them all away. He is our strong tower. He is our strong tower. Sometimes whenever you get past all the deep mysteries and you get past all of the theological things and you get past all of the great shadows and types, it all comes down to one thing. Faith in Him. Faith in in Him. You can make it to heaven today without knowing all the mysteries. You can make it to heaven today without knowing all of the deep theological things, brothers, please, but you can't make it without faith. Amen? That's most important. Grab a hold of faith. Get a bulldog grip on it and don't let go. He said the just shall live by faith. He said we walk not by sight, but by faith. Amen? He said that Oh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? He has given us that faith. All we got to do is use it. Say, how would God say that without faith it's impossible to please Him? He's already given you faith. He just wants you to use it. It's not. He hasn't done something unfair and say, now you've got to have a PhD, uh, uh, whatever kind of DDDs and all. You've got to have this great education. And then you've got to go out and get it for yourself. He's already given you what you need to make it. He's given you the faith. He's given you grace. Oh, my Lord, grace that is sufficient for every mile. Grace is that, is that is sufficient for every trial. He is our strong tower. Trust in Him today. Put your faith in Him today. He will see you through. You're not going to be the first person in history that they write about that says, well, this guy here trusted God and he died. And he, he died without hope. Amen? No. Even if you have to give up your life on this side, you won't die without hope. One of the martyrs that Fox wrote about in his Fox's Book of Martyrs, and I don't remember the one that was, but as they walked him toward the place where he would give his life, he began to rejoice as if he was being united with a lost loved one or as if he was being brought to some great treasure. It was as if he was getting to the point where he, where it was as if he was saying, the moment I've been waiting for, the beauty of the place where I can give my life for Him. Amen. Hallelujah. This life ain't all there is. This, we don't just have hope in this life. We have an eternal hope found in Jesus Christ. Trust in Him. Put your faith in Him. He will see you through. I can't promise you everything's going to be rosy. I can't promise you you won't go through things. But I can promise you this. If you hold on to Him, He'll hold on to you. And you will make it through. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go. Hallelujah.